to the Pharaoh and he says, he says to the Pharaoh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And the me was not to Moses, the me was to God. He wanted the Pharaoh to release the people so that they could have a feast to God. They could celebrate God. And so the Pharaoh, who already had a heart and heart, which means he's mean-spirited, no God, no love in the heart, he was hardened. God knew what he was going to do. But Moses did. And so now Pharaoh asked Moses, you mean you want me to let your people go? I have work for them to do. They had a quota every day as slaves of what work they had to do. How many bricks they needed to make. How many bricks they needed to lay in building buildings. And so now Pharaoh gets really pissed off and he says, you want them to take time off? That must mean they have extra time and they're not working hard. So now he doubled up on what he wanted them to do. So what happens with that? Work. Yeah. Now that this, Real work. Well, the slaves now are going to have to work twice as hard. And Pharaoh becomes even more intolerant. And so now what happens? He's wanting too much. He wants too much and he's willing to beat them and, and do anything, whip them to get the work. And so now the Israelites go to Moses. Look at the extra suffering you brought upon us. You came here to rescue us out, but now you've made it worse. And they start resenting Moses. How many times have we tried to help somebody and it didn't go exactly as planned and the people you're trying to help start resenting you for trying to help hey leave me alone mind your own business i'll handle my own nonsense here well that's what happened and we see in 521 let's see oh the king says to to uh, moses and aaron why do you take the people from their work? Why are you distracting them? Then that's when he says no. In 521, when now the Israelites, the Jews, they said to them, let the Lord look on you and judge because you have made us hated in the sight of Pharaoh. These are his own countrymen. The people that God sent him to rescue. They're saying, now the Pharaoh hates us more. They weren't looking to God. They were looking at their own circumstances. So Moses, after his people said that, returned to the Lord. And now Moses says to the Lord, Lord, why have you brought trouble on your people? Why is it you have sent me? So now Moses, as soon as he faces adversity, he starts doubting the Lord. So now, God hardens his heart, Pharaoh's, and Moses is told by God, go back, go back to Pharaoh, there's more. And the second request is in 7-9. When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show him a miracle for yourselves, you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod. You know how they had a rod, like if they were shepherds, they had the hook and then a regular rod in those days because most were shepherds. <clears throat> and God gave Moses a rod to take down there that he said, he will empower signs and wonders. So now they go into the Pharaoh. And he says, God says, cast your rod out and hit it on the ground and your rod will become a serpent. 
a snake. He hits his rod down, casts it out, the rod becomes a snake. However, now the Pharaoh calls in his magicians, his magical people, his wise people, without a god, and they duplicate the exact same example. They knock on the ground and a serpent comes out of their wood rock. Come on, the magicians, Ross. absolutely. Ross. Come on, dude. You gotta have some meat. Jeremy, Jeremy, that's when them daggone snakes started. <laughs> no, sir, that's not Now, where did the woman and snake go? Oh, uh, uh, Adam and Eve. On. I got the word for it. Women and snake are the root of all evil. Where does that say it in that book? I've never read it, but I'll look for it. <laughs> it's it's in me. that book. It, the first time we My were grandma doing, taught me that, bro. Okay. Well, it could have been. I didn't you know. It could be from the Garden of Eden where a serpent came upon Eve to convince her to eat off of the tree. But getting back to this, the magicians had the same power. They thought they had the same power. Somebody had the power. Oh, they duplicate what? What Moses did and his yeah, brother do, did. Yeah. Except they one tried. thing happened that they didn't expect. The serpent that came from Moses' rod ate all the other snakes that the magicians produced. <laughs> ate them all up well, you to know, show the power of God. Oh, you know, king yeah, snakes. Dang, really. Oof, the, I don't the know the what the 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 I, I hear you. I don't, don't tell me <laughs> what kind of snake. Poisonous not poisonous snake. Well, we don't know any of that yet. <laughs> so I do. All right. Yeah, it's poisonous snake. But more, That's why I don't like them. But Pharaoh now <laughs> refuses because Moses said, you've seen my power of my God. But Pharaoh says, you've seen the power of my magician. No, I will not let your people go. So now they come back. And now God sends Moses out to where Pharaoh is bathing in the morning in the Nile River. Because in Egypt, remember we talked about it the other day, Egypt had a God for everything. God of every fertility, God of the sun, God of the moon, God of the stars. They had a little G God for everything. And so they thought that the river, if he bathed in the river, that it would bless the Pharaoh. So God sent him out to where he was. And what does Moses ask him? He goes in 715. And we're going through this fast too. He asked Pharaoh to let his people go or he will show him what the Lord will do. And the Lord says, go to the Pharaoh when he goes out to the water, you shall stand by the river's bank to meet him. And the rod which you turn to a serpent, you shall take in your hand. And you shall say to the Pharaoh, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you saying, let my people go. So that they may serve me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh would not hear Moses. He would not listen. Well, he was a king, right? Oh, he was. There's nobody stronger. And remember, Pharaoh, Egypt at that point, yeah. was as strong of a country as any other one. Yeah. So no one could go against him. Yeah. So now, he hears this. And he says, let my people go, but Pharaoh declines. He says, if you do not let my people go, I will strike the waters with my staff, and the waters will turn to blood. Pharaoh says no. Moses and Aaron strike the staff on the water, the river immediately the water turns to blood. And 
we know that if it's blood, all the fish die, as it says, and the fish that are in the river shall die, the river shall stank, shall stink, and the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. This is what Moses said, if you don't do it. Is this why they call it the Red Sea? No, or good that? question, no. <laughs> right, okay, I just want to know. Oh, it, but the Red Sea the is a big thing. Thing. That's what I was thinking. That's a great thought. The Red Sea will come in at the very end Okay. when he leads his people out of, it, of Egypt finally. So now, Moses hits his thing. The sea has changed. Now, Pharaoh re repents a little bit. Oh, he says, I have messed up because the fish died, the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water. And it was holy. And the magicians of Egypt did so with the enchantments. And the Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them. So, even though Moses turned the water, the river, the river Nile, huge river, to blood, the magicians did the same thing in smaller rivers. So he would not believe in the power of God. He would not believe in the power of God. And so now, he said the they, oh, they were big into magic, into the occult. They worshipped everything you could imagine. They were, well, it was Satan it's worth it. Right? Oh, I don't know if that's oh, what they did. That's not people. God work, it's Satan. Oh, you better believe it. They I were worshipping. That's not God work. I, and <laughs> there's where, we had a great question last on Thursday. Because God also knew that Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And God continued to harden his heart. And we had a great question say, why would God harden anybody's heart? Because God knew that his heart was already hardened. Every time he saw God plead to him, ask him to relent and let his people go, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. So God merely continued in the hardening of his heart. So now, the magicians also performed the same thing. So Pharaoh says, hey, get out of here. I'm not letting your people go. Now, now comes an 8-1. Faith. Huh? Faith. Not faith. When faith? It's Is that faith? why they say he hit the road, Jack? Oh, because he didn't believe in, in God. He only believed oh. in his magicians. He only believed in his own power. And so, at no point did Pharaoh ever believe in the power of God. And so now, Jesus says, there's more. Go back to the Pharaoh. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. But if you refuse, To let them go, I will smite all your territory with frogs. Which means, I will bring on your entire country with frogs. And as I told you, this teaching this, for me, I needed to study more. Because it's a lot to learn. And so when I went home the other day, after Miss Keisha asked me those tough questions, I start looking and I see frogs because I start saying to myself why did God bring frogs over the entire land in their houses in every building everywhere on the ground frogs 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 were a god in Egypt they worshiped frogs because of fertility it would help a woman conceive so they would worship a frog mm. so God knew exactly what he was doing and so his mate his first major um, thing
thing that he brings is frogs or second. It's the frogs come on and now the magicians try to duplicate this process. First process, they could not duplicate. They could not bring more frogs onto where they were. So the, the, the magicians go to Pharaoh. Let me see if I can find the exact verse. So the magicians, let me just see this, 8-7. Eight, eight, and the magician, no, I take it back. <laughs> the magicians did so with the enchant enchantments and brought up frogs on the land. So the first three things, the serpent, the blood, and the frogs, the magicians duplicate. Pharaoh's heart is hardened. Pharaoh says, no way. I'm not letting your people go. God says, okay, no problem. He sends Moses back again to Pharaoh. After Pharaoh rescind his problem. You see, when the frogs were there, there was such a stink. Could you imagine? Literally millions of frogs laying all over here, jumping all over and dying. Could you imagine the stink mm -mm. of what that is? Hey, they were but the serpents up. was loving that though. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> but boy, I bet you they did good fishing using those flies, yeah, right? Sir. Yeah. They were fat as fat you get. All right. <laughs> but now it's stunk. So Pharaoh goes to Moses and he says, Tell your God to remove these frogs. I, I, I'll consider letting your people go. God removes the frogs. Pharaoh says, No, I'm not going to let your people go. God already knew that's what he was going to do. See now, not only does he not, does he know there's no God, or to him there's no God, now he's trying to deceive God. That doesn't usually work out too good when we try to deceive God. So now, he relents on his promise to let him go once God would remove the frogs. God takes the frogs, Pharaoh says, too bad, I'm not, I'm not letting them go. So now, the Lord speaks to Moses again in 8.15 and he says Pharaoh's heart was hardened once he saw the frogs removed and he would not live up to his agreement. So the Lord said to Moses say to Aaron, stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land so that it may become lice lice Mm. throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, <laughs> I don't want to ask anybody if you've ever had lice. How you doing? How you doing? We're doing great, you thank know, you. chickens and turkeys and all kind of birds and animals catch lice. Oh, a, yeah. yeah. They were a bit terrible. <laughs> oh, they're nasty. <laughs> Think of that. Lice throughout all of Egypt. The dust of the land became lice throughout all of the land of Egypt. Now the magicians so worked with their magic to bring forth lice, but they could not do it. So there was lice on man and beast there. Man and beast loaded with lice. Then when the magicians could not bring forth the lice, the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. This man has God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard and he did not heed their request to free the Israelites as the Lord had asked. Now it's at the end of the power of the magicians. And so now there's been frogs, lice, and now he rescinds and he asks Pharaoh through Moses, let my people go again. He says, if you don't, Pharaoh, I will bring, let's see, these are the flies. 
821. Or else, if you do not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms, swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your houses. Sometimes we let our dog in and out of our house, and a fly will get in. That's the biggest pain in the neck for two weeks. That one fly. Could you imagine swarms and swarms of flies in your tents, in your sleeping bags, all over? The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. And in that day I will set apart. So now, all of these slaves that were the Jews, they lived in a place called Goshen which is in Egypt. But on these plagues, you know, Goshen was in Egypt. I know, so it wasn't on it, down it in the basement or something? No, oh, it was yeah. up a little bit towards oh. their promised land. Oh, okay. oh, no, that's okay. But all of these things that the Lord brought on Pharaoh, none of them affected the people living in Goshen, the Jews. So the frogs, the flies, the lice never entered God's people's place of habitat. It was a way to show the power of God. God not only could deliver swarms of flies or lice or frogs, but he could say, I don't want them to touch my people. That's power. He relegated where those swarms were going to go. Frogs over all the Egyptians, but not in the place of my people in Goshen. Mm. And all of this happens. Now the flies are coming. And he says, in 821, God says, He wants His people released so that they may worship the Lord that they may have inter intercession with the Lord. And he tells them in 832, 832, but Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time, neither would he let his people go, even with all of what he's seen. And remember, this is after his magicians were unable to duplicate that of which the God of which our God did. He could not produce flies. And so now we see God sits there and says, this man is hardening his own heart. I'm going to help him right along. He continues to have his heart. But you see, when he does these miracles, why do you think God brought such misery on Pharaoh and his Truthful. That's one. He's lying, he's lying. I mean, he's lying and he's no, not lying. Yeah, they ain't gonna let trust God. God. They don't want no God. There's your answer right there. They don't want a God. They want to be like God. I they want to be their own gods. That's what I'm saying. That's they right. Can. And there's they, where they we can't have take, they can't take no point. Have they want God lying keep healing? <laughs> <laughs> and overall conniving to get their own yeah, way. Same thing. And JD, when God knows we don't have a God, we have to be careful. Because we may think we have a God. We may think, or I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell everybody I, I love God. And you know, I always make fun, oh Lord, oh Lord, I love you, Lord. Listen, you can do all of that, all the hand raising, all you want. But there's one thing and one person we can never fool. That's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God knows exactly what's in our heart. No matter what we say or sometimes what we act like. We could go to church every day. We could go to church every Sunday. We could go up there and worship. We could love on everybody that comes in. But if we don't love the Lord, 
and put him first in our lives, it's exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. God knows when we don't honor, believe, and follow him. But they know those people will worship idols and statues. Absolutely. Like they and they were, believe in them, God. Oh, yeah. They believe that the frog, if they loved yeah. up on a frog, that it would bring them fertility in their family. They'd have a baby. Yeah. So they What's worship They worship a frog. Yeah. But you see, in those times, Duck and Bruce, that worked for them. They thought it worked for them. <laughs> see, they thought that they could raise up anything as a God. And so we see all of these things happening. It's to show them what J.D. just said. Listen, he's telling Pharaoh, I'm God. Those things you worship, you keep on worshiping them, that's your choice. As Dave always says, you all got free will. You want to follow this guy, Pharaoh? You want to worship frogs? Uh, there was something else, the flies. Because <clears throat> they... In those days, we look at it as flies today, but beetles, they worship beetles in those days. Mm. Beetles were a god. <clears throat> and so God said, you want to worship beetles and frogs and, and think that the Nile is holy, the water is holy, you can think all you want. The Indians, like, they worship monkeys. <laughs> worship anything. It's like, Ron is in. <laughs> they worship monkeys. And there's so like, many different cultures they, they worship. They come in the house and rob the whole house. Steal all the food while they're in there. You <laughs> can't have no gun in India. If you do, they're going to kill you. <laughs> and then the monkey that took come in your house, a whole patch of them come in your house. They yeah, robbed people, your house and went out the door. Yeah, them people worship cows. And you're, and you're right. It's a matter of... But you see, we look at that, Bruce, because you're right. Different cultures worship different things. But we have to be very careful for us. We also worship false gods. Do you do you worship a false god? Well, I try not to, but you know, I smoke cigarettes, so that's probably a false god. I drink them. Well, maybe. Maybe, and it could be. But... What about people that worship wealth or status or or position in their job? That's more of an addiction. Well, it could be an addiction, but let me tell you, when they give up everything else, hey, I was a prime example. I worked so hard when I had my job that it took away time from my wife and from my family. I absolutely worship what my job was. I was I was thankful I had it. I was paid very, very well at that point. And all of that, look at that, we're talking about flies they're landing on. All of that, we all can worship other things. Guys, I could worship food. Could be alcohol, could be drugs, could be an automobile, could be a house. We could overspend on a house or overspend on a car because we want more than what we, we should have. That's worshiping other idols, J.D. We do it today. No different. All they were was specific in what their gods were. They would worship a frog or, or beetles or whatever. We're more sophisticated that we're going to just silently worship wealth or a house, or a car, or status, or, or power. Look at politics today. You tell me that's not totally about power? It's power. It's power. And they'll do anything to sell their soul to stay in office. When we see our congressmen and congresswomen in Congress for 30 years, I wonder if they still feel they're doing as much good as when they first started. I don't know that answer. But just don't be deceived that when we read this, this pertains to us today. Yes, they worshiped other gods. They showed us, as JD said, that there was no God there. They didn't believe in God, straight out. 
But how many Americans today believe in God? A lot of them worship the devil too. Well, they say the devil, the devil is a God. That's exactly right. They, they, and I would tell you, they're no different than Pharaoh. There is no God. I don't believe in a God. Who is your God? I don't see us much different than the Egyptians today. I just, I don't see it. The difference would be different generation where you do things yes yes there's certainly a different way we do it but today there's whereas in egypt there was no churches today in america there's churches there's an easier entrance into following christ now the problem with that is there's many different churches so some are not all godly but too much for this not enough go yeah, there's not enough just following so, having a relationship. Well, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of churches out here to make money. Money is the root of all evil. Yeah. That's the way they look. Yeah. Well, that's in the Bible. The Bible says it's not the root it's of the, all evil. It's the love of money. That's exactly right. It's not the right. money itself. It's the love of money that brings us down. Because it's not bad to have money. If God blesses us and we have money, it, there it is. There's the answer. The whole deal of, I've been an addict for 30 some years, man. And I ain't happy at all about it. You know what? You know why I don't do nothing every day? It's because of money. I bust my ass. I know my trade inside and out. I make a millions of dollars. They don't need to tell me what to do. I already know what to do. Excuse my language. But <laughs> that money that I get every week don't do nothing to make me a person that I am. Well, there's where we have to guard ourselves, Bruce, because you're right. It sucks. Well, it sucks. Money shouldn't be like that. Well, in some countries, they kill you for a dollar. They kill you for one cent. Here, we have that America, down here. They kill you right here in Richmond, bro. Well, no. it could happen here in Richmond, but not only here in Richmond. And you're right, though. All Doug. around the world. Absolutely. I've seen kids, they go out and buy teenagers fight when Jordan, years ago, the Jordan sneaker was the hottest sneaker, going for they 200 bucks, for 200. They killed them. Kids were being killed just to rob their sneakers. So God, when dude. we look at this today, don't just say, oh, look at those silly people. They worship flies and frogs and, and, and all that. We're not worshiping God the way we should ourselves. So let's keep going with the story. That's why they all, everybody in the country agree that it's dangerous. There's no because doubt we can, have something they can, to offer. They can, they can do their preaching. They can do whatever they want without nobody bothering them. Well, Nobody killed them. Well, anyway. no, the government isn't, at least. At least we're proving.